the new normal. Risk is the only certainty in supply chain today. Joining us to speak about that is Lisa Morales Hellebo, founder and managing general partner of Refashioned Ventures. Lisa, it is great to see you once again. Welcome. Likewise, thanks for having me. Lisa, we, uh, Lisa, we want to talk about risk, of course, in all of its uh, various aspects, uh, particularly because I know there are any number of things that are impacting supply chains today, but that's got to be top of mind for so many people. So let's get right to it then. Uh, how is it? How is it affecting supply chains for so many people? What do you say? Thank you. Yeah, um, supply chains used to be set it and forget it <laughs> mm -hmm. until COVID. <laughs> And COVID really, um, I like to say it's like you have a little, a kid sister or brother and you're playing a board game and they come in and flip the board, except that's every day. <laughs> so you have to reset the stage and figure out all the moving parts all over again. Mm -hmm. And in that type of scenario, it's risk due to climate crisis, we severe weather patterns, war, uh, political instability, whatever it is terrorist attacks on exactly. ships in the red sea yeah yes, of course. or just you know human error suez canal whatever there is constant increasing risk and if you're not planning for that your company is not going to have any product to sell and i like to tell people you know reshoring can help to mitigate that risk but if you're not looking at your end-to-end -end value chain and you're only looking at conversion of your finished goods you still have risk you need to have a localized infrastructure to mitigate that risk. Well, let's walk through that because that, this is what's going to get to the practical information here. Yeah. How can companies plan you know, to counteract, to deal with, to anticipate, uh, to handle the risk that in, is inevitably going to occur in value chains? So what would you tell them? I'd say you need to invest first and foremost in data and transparency. You can't manage anything you aren't measuring. <laughs> so you can't measure it if you don't have data behind it. Mm. That's the first part. Mm. And mm. it's actually incredibly difficult across the complex globalized value chains to get true data transparency, which is another reason to try to localize or regionalize your supply chain infrastructure end to end value chain. It's a lot easier to get visibility on a localized constrained set of partners than it is the globalized billion nodes of our current value chain. So invest in transparency, visibility. AI is here to help us not to take our jobs, but to augment our capabilities mm -hmm. and to uh, quantify all of that data and give you actionable insights. So start with your transparency and then layer on agility, resiliency, redundancy. Well, that sounds um, perhaps easier said than done. And I guess yeah. the question is, whose job is it? Is it going to be the middle manager or is it going to be the C-suite that really needs to take charge, yeah. reassess and start uh, determining what has to be done if we're going to build in agility and resiliency, et cetera, into our value chain so yeah. that we are managing risk that is inevitably going to occur. I mean, who's responsible? Yeah. What I love about supply, one of the many things I love about supply chain is that it's not just binary. There's a lot of subjectivity and pesky humans <laughs> that you need to get on board okay. to have success. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so um, Silicon Valley doesn't do well with pesky humans. <laughs> they like to come in and, and build, build, build and, you know, uh, win a market. But you need to win over the workers. You need to understand them and support them and get their buy in. So if you just have a top down strategy where you're mandating, this is the new platform we're using, you may not have support from your workers. You need to have top down and bottom up so that they understand and it's, a, it's an integrated strategy across your company. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we've used some interesting words here. We've talked about uh, uh, resiliency, we've talked about redundancy, we've talked about visibility, we've talked about risk management in one way or another, all of these important things. The technologies that we need to rely upon in order to ensure that, that agility and all those other important words, what are those technologies? Oh, well, <laughs> we have a lot of them in our portfolio. <laughs> uh, things like um, Diagon, we just closed a deal on Diagon. It is a, a visibility and procurement platform for industrial uh, supply chain manufacturing equipment. 
where do you go to buy that stuff before? Well, you go to Google and you Google and you find a vendor and you send out a bid, uh, ask for a bid and you're doing lots of manual diligence. It's time consuming, it's inefficient, it's uh, one-sided data. You don't have a full 360 view other than what they tell you about the company. Companies like that are helping you to augment your, um, expand your opportunities of partners and give you that agility and resiliency because you ultimately need to identify not just the one perfect partner for everything, you need multiple oh. to give that redundancy. And it's really difficult to do that without platforms like Diagon. Oh. We have uh, next-gen MESs. There's a ton of legacy platforms that have been built in the old model where you have a huge expensive SaaS package platform you're buying and it requires two to three years of a consultancy to come in and deploy it for two to three million dollars and then you're paying for those consultants to manage it and maintain it along with hundreds of thousands of dollars of software licensing fees every year. Our next gen MES, Arcstone, uh, in our portfolio, they've broken up that model so you have a free MVP version that a small factory can onboard and it's WYSIWYG, or as kids say today, no code. <laughs> you drag and drop, and anyone could use it. Mm -hmm. And then when you jump from the freemium version to the enterprise version, they come in and give you a 21-day hackathon to teach your own workers how to drag and drop and uh, lay out your floor plan and all the interactions and tasks that need to happen. And on top of that, you have a control tower. So the control tower allows you to have visibility across a distributed network of factories to automate throughput capacity and load bearing. That's not possible in a lot of those legacy systems with mm -hmm. lots of silos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, uh, that's practical advice that we needed to have, you know, the technologies that we need to uh, turn to. But now, if you would uh, give the viewer some idea of what it is that Refashioned Ventures is, yeah. what does it do? How well, is it is focus going to help them? Yes, Refashioned Ventures, we're an early stage uh, venture fund that invests in companies that are refashioning industrial value chains. And we invest across data and AI, advanced materials, advanced manufacturing, next-gen supply chains and logistics, and some payments. Uh, we're called Refashioned because we we invest in the future, the future state where the world has already been refashioned. And the word refashioned is kind of an old fashioned word. Lots of people don't really use it today, but what I loved about it is that it speaks to an entire paradigm shift. To refashion something is to rethink it from end to end, mm. and that is what has to happen today with our supply chains. Well, that's quite important because uh, when we talk about the importance of the comprehensive end-to-end uh, -end supply chain, there clearly ought to be that kind of approach to what we've been talking about here. Lisa, I know you're busy here you know, at Manifest, but you found time to speak with us. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so very much. Thank you for having me. It's Lisa Morales-Hellable with Refashioned Ventures talking today about risk, the only certainty in your supply chain. Thanks for watching.